Lorena Daniels, the president of the Epsilon Theta Omega Chapter of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated. Today, we are observing Pink Goes Red, which is an annual celebration of our awareness of heart health. It is very important in our community to emphasize the importance of heart health and of course of women's health. So our organization focuses on looking at the issues and supporting the issues that embody healthiness and more importantly today, heart health. <laughs> and I'm with Lamar State College Port Arthur. I'm an upper mobility instructor and today we brought 10 of our students to volunteer with Pink Goes Red. What we're teaching today is hands-only CPR which helps our community if someone falls out they're able to do just hands-on CPR and save a life. <laughs> credentials but we are truly grateful she is a member of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated and we are so grateful to her and her team for sharing gifts and talents with us today so I'm going to turn it over to Miss Cynthia okay good morning everybody good morning. so the goal for today really to be honest is to make sure that you feel safe in an emergency situation nothing worse than for you to be put in that situation and you think I want to help but I don't have the tools to help that person. Right here, Lamar State College Board author. She teaches in the RN program. We have Ms. Shalonda Allen. She is also a nursing instructor at Lamar State College Board author, and she teaches in the basic nursing program. We are, the three of us are actually American Heart CPR instructors, the American Heart Association. They're going back to school to get their RN, a higher, just a higher level of education. So the CPR is just a disclaimer. In the event that we're doing the compressions and you had a traumatic experience and you had to do CPR on somebody, it's okay to stay. Some people say, you know what, I want to help, but I don't know what I can do. Or I'm worried about being sued. The Good Samaritan Law of Protection, as long as you're not out there splitting somebody's chest open with a butter knife saying, you know, I'm going to massage your heart and do all this other stuff, you are safe, so don't worry about that. You will be okay. Did everybody get that before I move on? No, we can all go back to that. Say that to your photos, share that with a loved one. So, hey, I want to get CPR today, and I understand this. I don't know how long teaching CPR in the community. And my sister called me one day 
and her father-in-law wasn't responding in the truck, and she's driving there to meet them. And she's like, what do I do? And I'm having to talk to her about what she needs to do in the event she gets there. He's a big guy, so I'm like, you're just going to have to lay the seat down. And when you get there, if he's not responding, I need you to just put your hands in the center of his chest and push fast. But she knew to call. She knew to say what to do to get herself mentally ready. And I want you to be able to be that voice on the other end if somebody calls you. They'll say, hey, I remember you took that class. What to do? Because sometimes people don't think to call 911. Who do they call? The family first, right? And you're like, why didn't you call 911? Like, what? They call the family first. So in the event that happens, you can say, push hard, push fast, hang up the phone with me, call 911 and call me back. Because you would have to give CPR to somebody. They have a heart attack? That's a good one. This young lady said they have a heart attack. That's a perfect example. Because what happens at that point, the heart muscles die, it's die off. Okay. Another reason we may have to give CPR is what about, we're talking about the big opioid crisis right now. Somebody has overdosed on a narcotic. Believe it or not, you may have to give CPR in that event. Because those narcotics, what? Stop their breathing. The breathing stops, stops the heart stops. Somebody choked me. Believe it or not, you can't get that oxygen up. They're at salt grass. They're at wherever Logan's. And they're eating that steak and the oxygen come up. We need to go to CPR because the act of doing a chest compression will pop, pop that object out. What if those people on the sidelines did not know and did not have the tools available? And he's big about talking about, if you go to the American Heart, he has, he has a big push for CPR and heart awareness. So when you leave here today, this is not a skill set that you can't go teach somebody else. You can get a pillow, put it on the bed, show your loved ones, this is how we do it, pull up a YouTube video. The thing is, I want you to remember, we're gonna push hard, push fast today. There's some songs they like for us to think of when we start doing this. Y'all remember some of the songs? Y have y'all heard of any? If it's fun, if they say, oh, they're probably okay, right? There's probably nothing going on with them. But if they don't respond, we need to think about going ahead and giving CPR to them. We have about a 10 second window, according to the American Heart. So they want you to make a decision very quickly to decide if you're gonna give CPR or not. 10 seconds, one 1,000, two 1,000, three 1,000, four 1,000, five 1,000, six 1,000, 10 seconds. You're scanning their chest, looking for any signs of circulation. What would that mean? Rise and fall of the chest. Look over at your neighbor. You see their chest rising and falling? Okay. Any movement? Okay. Any movement? Blinking of the eyes? Anything going on that would tell us that, guess what? They were not in cardiac arrest, that they don't need any help. But let's say you're so freaked out, you're nervous, and you get on their chest, and there's nothing wrong with them. They're probably going to wake up and say, oh, what you doing? Okay. <laughs> this is me out of says they push this. It's better to give CPR who, to someone who doesn't need it than not give it at all. Because we have about 10 seconds to make that determination. So 10 seconds, they're saying it's better to give it than not give it at all. I want you to really think on that one. Because the longer I let that brain and that heart go without oxygen, what's going to happen to that person? They're going to probably die. It's better to get on their chest and they said, oh, then not do something at all. We good, Miss Bro? Basketball for you to dribble a basketball. What kind of surface does it need to go on? The floor, a hard surface, right? Okay. So if the heart is like a basketball, because we need it to pump, we need to give CPR on what kind of surface? A hard, flat surface. Okay. That's one of the reasons why I told Jennifer, my sister, I need you to lay this seat down in that car if you're going to do that. I was trying to make it as hard as flat as we could without her having to try to sit them on the floor. That's the reason why when there's a motor vehicle accident, have you ever seen EMS roll somebody on a plastic board and backboard? That's one of the reasons. Because can, can you do a basketball in a bed on a mattress? It's not going to back, bounce back up, right? So if we're trying to make the heart work like a pump, it needs what, a flat surface to go boom, boom, boom. You're going to hear words like chest recoil. That's what it means, just let it pop back up. And when it pops back up, what does it fill with? Oxygen-rich blood, okay? Have I lost anybody? Everybody good? So what's the first thing we're gonna do? Survey the scene. We gotta make sure we're safe, right? 
okay? We don't want to go through gun bullets. I don't need anybody pulling over on 69 on my left bomb being today. I learned hands only CPR, and you going through traffic, right? And, and all of a sudden, you on the news, and it's talking about, Lord, Cynthia told me to do that. No. <laughs> And we're checking for what? Responsiveness. Sir, sir, ma'am, ma'am, are you okay? And we have how long to see if they're okay? About 10 seconds. So it's pretty quick. 10 seconds is quick. And American Heart says it's better to get on the chest and do CPR than what? Than not. Because if they don't need it, they just had too many drinks. Or if they're having a temper tantrum, you got a you know 80 year old person having a temper tantrum down on the floor, you get on their chest while they go, like, oh, and get up, okay? So once you start your compressions, we need to make sure we talked about throwing a flat surface. Hey, do y'all mind checking my volume? Thank you. Uh, we need to make sure it's on a flat surface, and we also need, in order to get to that chest cavity real well, we need a bare chest. Have you ever seen EMS come up and they cut the person's clothes off? Yes. And you're like, don't cut, don't cut that Gucci shirt. Hold oh, on. <laughs> well, we're going to cut the shirt because if not, we're going to be burying them with that shirt, okay? Uh, so. What's more expensive, that Gucci shirt or that Yeah, okay. So that's something to think about. So they're going to cut that shirt open. They're going to cut whatever. Males, while you're in the room, realize that you may have to expose that female's breast tissue because we're going to go right there to the center of the chest. She would rather be on the news with her, her chest, her nipples blurted out and alive than for you to say, you know, I just really didn't want to expose her. You down at the funeral home talking about, we just really didn't want to show that, okay? So they will cut that. When we're talking about that, because we want to get chest recall, we need to go right there to the center of the chest. And we usually describe it right between the nipple line, okay? Anatomically correct, we know that can change with pregnancy, it can change with age. So where should the nipple line fall? And that's where we're going to put our hands. I want everybody to look at your hands. Your hands are blessed. They're going to save a life. They have purpose. And today you're about to walk out. This is another purpose for your hand. You didn't realize your hands had this purpose. Maybe you didn't, but today you're realizing your hands are made to save a life. We're going to take our hands and we're going to put our hands like this. We're going to interlace our fingers like that. And we're going to use the heel of our hand. The heel of our hand is a lot stronger than the finger part of our hand. If you ever took a self-defense class, who the you say to do? The heel of the hand. There's some force. So if I'm trying to get on that chest cavity and to start that heart back working as a pump, I need to use what? The heel of my hand. Some force. How far do you go? Well, nobody's going to pull. I, I, I've been in a lot of codes, and I've never seen anybody come in and say, all right, let's see if you want deep enough. Okay? But the American Heart says usually on anybody over the age of one, we like to go about two inches. Okay? About two inches in depth. And little babies about one and a half. Our mannequins will light up in their shoulders if you're going to the appropriate depth. You're going to get green lights, meaning that guess what? You're doing it appropriately. Yellow lights means that your rhythm may be a little off. Okay? Maybe dancing like I dance, your rhythm all a little bit, I'll be rolling it out. Okay? Uh, but it may say you need to get back on a, on a, on a rhythm. Like the staying a lot, they be sharp doing nothing for them. Okay? So please, when you get on, we'll give you time to practice. We want you to be comfortable. In real life, nobody lights up. If you went home tonight and rolled over to your significant other and got on their chest, don't do this, you're not gonna see lights popping up, right? You just have to determine that you're pushing hard and fast. I'm telling you this is not this. These young ladies have sweatshirts on, the shirts underneath. Some of y'all look around what you have on. I'm gonna use you. Do you mind if I touch you? Okay, I'm gonna finish shirt. Thank you for letting me use you too as a demonstration. And she has on a beautiful thick jacket. If I did not remove this, am I truly gonna get to her chest cavity? No. Because this is about two inches worth of fabric. Does that make any sense? So that's why, thank you. I appreciate you letting me use you. Um, that's one of the reasons why we have to realize we have to get to that bare chest. We gotta get to that chest cavity. Pops in there and they start. 27, 28, 29, 30. You're like, oh, Lord, they didn't teach me that. <laughs> oh. They're going to be incorporating the breasts at that point, okay? Usually about the six to eight minute window. And who's going to show up first? The fire department. Okay? 
Now, there's usually a paramedic or an EMT with the fire department that shows up, and they're going to show up before our, our EMS, our true EMS people come on this initiative to push this with Red Heart Month that we understand the importance of letting everybody know we have a purpose in this earth, and our purpose to, is to save lives. And we're pushing this. I mean, we push this. We, we push this as nurses and healthcare workers that this is our purpose to do this for people. So one of the things I want you to remember is when they show up, they will take over, and when you hear them change their count, you didn't do anything wrong, okay? And, and stay along. Do you want me to stay and help? There's some things you can do to work your bystanders. I'm gonna tell you right now, because you're gonna have bystanders. What does everybody like to do? Video you? TikTok? Okay? So I'm gonna backtrack just a little. I kinda wanted to set up the scene. Now I'm gonna add a few more features to the scene. So you walk up. You're in the park and like, oh man, I knew I should have went and got that dress. Why is he down on the ground? Okay. You walk up, and you're like, oh man. Oh, and you're hearing my voice in the background. Sir, sir, please be okay. I gotta be somewhere. Sir, sir, you okay? Okay? He doesn't respond. Miss um, Allen said, pull your cell phone out and call 911. Put it on speaker. American Heart wants you to take the initiative and do that. Because you can still ask people to go. I want you to. So you would say, ma'am, you in that pretty uh, yellow neon shirt, can you go call 911 and get an AED if there's one available? Don't worry about it. Just go and get some help and ask for an AED. They may go in there and say, I need a BED. Okay. <laughs> 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 yeah. We need a BED. Yeah. 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 But whatever it is, I want you to feel comfortable. The reason why we do, we push the 911 is because we found in the community, we live in a social media network society, and people were not calling 911. I just told you the window for EMS, right? Could you imagine somebody didn't call 911, and you pass baby shark now, you say Africans, A, B, C, D. Okay, I'm going to do some questions. 